Now, I am Dustin Baker. We are eight days away from the NFL draft for the Vikings. It's going to be a large, pivotal event. I am here with my mainstay guest, Josh Fry, and a newcomer from CBS Sports, Dave Richard. How are you, sir? I'm excellent, Dustin. It's great to be here. It's great to be on with both you and Josh, talking Vikings, talking NFL draft. And, and may I also say, mm -hmm. oh! <laughs> there we go. That goes, right? That's, yep. that's the noise. That was actually really authentic. Uh, you know, like it, it sounded good, like the Gallahorn. So I, I'm I'm happy to record a version for the Vikings. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll put it on the intro <laughs> to the show. Uh, <laughs> we'll do this again at the end. But what uh, what what have you been working on that you want to get out in the open for our viewers? So my main beat with CBS Sports is fantasy football. I cover Sweet. the NFL uh, from a fantasy perspective. We have a live YouTube show pretty much every morning called fantasy football today. You could also download it as a podcast. We've been around for a long time. We help people dominate their fantasy football <laughs> leagues. And I've been on the sports line, early edge NFL draft prop show. I know sports betting isn't legal in Minnesota, but maybe you're listening where it is legal. And if you <laughs> are, and you want to pick some props, make the draft a little bit more entertaining. Uh, we can help you do that. You can find that on YouTube, search for sports line, and uh, Early Edge NFL Draft Prop Show. There are multiple episodes already on YouTube now that you can watch and make some picks with. All right, perfect. All right, we got, we got that out there. So that's where we can find your content. Now we want to transition for about 20 minutes or so into some of this Viking stuff and some NFL-themed items. Josh, I want to let you lead off. What do you got for Dave Richards, CBS Sports? Yeah, so first question, not particularly Vikings related, unless you want to say that this guy is going to the Vikings. Um, but one of the guys that I've just been fascinated by throughout this entire process is Brock Bowers, the tight end out of Georgia. It's just obviously the tight end spot isn't the most premier position in the NFL, but he just seems like such a sure thing prospect that it feels like a team is going to take a shot at him in the top 10, at least the way that I see it. How, how do you think that... How do, you, how do you think he ends up uh, being drafted this spring? I, I'm not sure he'll be a top 10 guy, Josh, but I, I see what you see with Brock Bowers and that he's just a matchup problem. And I kind of view him as the fourth best receiver in the draft. I, I know he can block. I don't know if he'll be ever as good as, say, George Kittle as a blocker, but I, th the key to his game is his receiving. He's got four or five speed. Um, really good hands, didn't run a lot of downfield routes last year. That might have been because of an injury, but he can get open downfield, really good against zone coverage. He is a little brittle, which is it's it's crazy to think about for a guy as big as he is, but he's had a lot of injuries going back to when he was a kid. But I, I think I, I don't think he's gonna be taken top 10 because I feel he's more of a luxury pick than necessarily a guy that a team can build around. Like you think about Marvin Harrison as a wide receiver. That's a stud elite number one wideout. I think neighbors can be the same. I think Romo Dunze can be the same. I don't know if, if Brock Bowers can be the exact same type of player where he's just such a target hog that an offense tailors their offense to make it all about him. So it's going to take a team that I think will be picking anywhere from 11 to 18, that'll take him. I think that's going to be the range that he goes. Wouldn't surprise me if he falls all the way to Indianapolis at 15. Wouldn't surprise me if Cincinnati took him at 18 or if Cincinnati traded up a little bit, maybe got in front of Indianapolis to take him. I actually love that spot for him for fantasy purposes. And then if there's a way that the Chargers could somehow trade down to say pick number 11, <laughs> they could make Brock Bowers their first pick. And here's a fun nugget for you on that. Brock Bowers was heavily recruited by Michigan when he was in high school. So this is going to be Jim Harbaugh's chance to work with Brock Bowers because he missed out on it when Bowers was coming out. That is that that's really interesting. I didn't know that. Um, and yeah, that just kind of solidifies that. I've been saying the Chargers have been a really intriguing trade partner for the Vikings this entire time. And honestly, probably the most likely one. But with that little tidbit out there now, that, that kind of just solidifies it for me. <laughs> Yeah, then they can they can take those picks and uh, use them on Bowers from the Vikings. How about, how about that, Josh? I love it. <laughs> <laughs> that would work. And if if the if the Vikings were to make that trade, then the Chargers could also use twenty three on a wide receiver, mm -hmm. and that's really what the Chargers need to address are the pass catchers in that offense. Because if you look at their roster now, it's Quentin Johnson, it's Josh Palmer, it's really not pretty, and they need somebody who can go and get the football downfield. They can't run it on every single play in the NFL. And they've got Justin Herbert 
for crying out loud. So <laughs> I, I would imagine that that's a solution that the Chargers might be interested in to immediately get their receiving core going is to move back, get two first round picks, and then they could theoretically, I don't know if Brian Thomas will make it all the way to 23, but they could get Bowers at 11. Maybe they trade up to get Brian Thomas, but they could also get one of the Texas wide receivers. Maybe they really like Troy Franklin. Maybe Harbaugh reaches for his guy, Roman Wilson, <laughs> one of my favorite prospects in the draft, and they get some pass catchers with those first two picks. Dave, one of the most common questions, well, the most common question I am asked from a Viking standpoint is who's the pick going to be? It feels like it's down to a binary choice between J.J. McCarthy and Drake May. Um, I get asked at all time, email, Twitter DMs. So even though you do a really sweet Gallahorn, I don't know that you're a Vikings fan. So I want your objective prediction. What do the Vikings do via trade, if at all, and who do they get? I think they'd love to trade up to three so that they get Drake May. I think that's who they would love to have in a perfect world. I mean, honestly, in a perfect world, they'd love to have Caleb Williams. <laughs> but I, they're not going to get him. I, I think May kind of fits what they want from their offense a little bit more than what Daniels does. And same thing with McCarthy. The problem is, is that the Patriots probably feel the exact same way about May that the Vikings do. He's a good fit for what they want to move their offense forward with. And I don't see any of those top three teams trading out. I would also be surprised if the Cardinals traded out from four. I don't know if they're going to get an offer that they would love. They desperately need a downfield receiver. And Kyler Murray's best years were with DeAndre Hopkins as his number one guy. And here comes Marvin Harrison, who I, I, is he as good as DeAndre Hopkins? Probably. And I'm talking about DeAndre Hopkins when he was in Arizona. Obviously, he's better than Hopkins now. But he might be better than Hopkins as well, just long-term. Just a guy who's a fantastic route runner, can get open, all that good stuff. Good enough speed, good enough height. Uh, not good enough height, great height. It's not good enough. It's it's really excellent height. Uh, and so I don't see the Cardinals moving out from four. I think they take the sure thing there. I think it's the Chargers at five. I think that's going to be the first flashpoint in the draft. And the Chargers with the new coaching staff and multiple needs, including what we've already talked about at, at receiver slash tight end, let's just call it receiver, mm -hmm. could very easily see the Chargers trying to stockpile more picks so that they could build this team the way that Harbaugh wants to build this team. It's an easy team to trade with. The Chargers trading with Minnesota. They're in different conferences. And it's it's a good offer. If the Chargers offer or if the Chargers get 11 and 23, the trade chart says that that favors L.A. to move back from five. Mm -hmm. And that would open the door for Minnesota to get a quarterback who I think could be very effective for them right away, and that's J.J. McCarthy. I think he's a, one of those high-floor type players, safe players. Also, Harbaugh would be doing McCarthy a favor mm -hmm. because he's get picked as a top-five guy, get a lot of money, go to a team where he's immediately starting in Minnesota. I, I just think it all kind of works itself out that way. And I thought about the other teams that might want to trade up to get McCarthy. And I don't think Denver can offer enough. I don't think the Raiders can offer enough. I think the Giants are blowing smoke. I don't think they want a quarterback in this draft. I think they're trying to get Malik Neighbors to fall to them at six. This is the way that it happens, is if a team trades up with the Chargers to get one of those quarterbacks, I think it'll be McCarthy. I think he's a good fit for the O'Connell offense. I love the receivers and tight end that he'll be throwing to in Minnesota. I think that's what the Vikings will end up doing in the draft. So for the, the pro may crowd like this guy, um, and if it's the Patriots sticking and picking may, are they, would they just sit him for a year or would they just roll and say, you know, we don't have the greatest roster, but we're going to do it anyhow. Cause I think the, the only thing that keeps me coming back to may is the fact that I think the Patriots need more roster building, and this is the perfect the opportunity to do it. So do you think it would be Brissett, like, initially? Uh, yeah, but not for the whole year. Okay. I think there could be there, – there's going to be a learning curve, just like we've seen with a bunch of other quarterbacks recently. I don't think any team is going to do what the Chiefs did with Mahomes, where they, they – they, they, remember, they traded up for Mahomes, <laughs> and then they had him sit for 15 of the first 16 games his rookie year. And then in week 17, it was a meaningless game. They let Mahomes play. But what the Chiefs did that year was implement an offense that they thought Mahomes could be effective in. Remember, Alex Smith had a really good year that year. Mm -hmm, yeah. And so I think they started transitioning toward Mahomes without necessarily putting Mahomes on the field and teaching an offense that Mahomes could thrive in. And that's just something that has always stood out to me. I remember talking about it on, on CBS Sports HQ. It's our live streaming channel for sports news that 
that Patrick Mahomes would step out in a major way in his first full season as, as the quarterback because the offense there was just so tailored to him the year prior. I, I don't think you'll see that anymore. I think you're going to see the Patriots start with Brissett, who's a strong arm, big quarterback, just like May is. And then once they go one and three, <laughs> oh and four, what do you have to lose? Mm-hmm. You, you get May out there, he gets acclimated, and he ends up doing the best that he can in a Patriots offense that probably won't be like the worst offense in the mm-hmm. league. But given what they have as, as far as their pass catchers go, it's not that great. But the 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 drop off from May slash McCarthy to Penix, Rattler, Knicks, I think it's pretty steep. Yeah. And I don't think if you've got the chance to draft one of those great quarterbacks that you pass up on it, even when there's a great receiver like Marvin Harrison, even if there's a great trade offer staring you in the face. And that's why I think the Patriots will ultimately take Drake May. All right. Fair enough. Josh, what else you got for Dave? That's a perfect segue into my next question here. Yeah. Uh, obviously, we started this draft process. There was kind of a big three between Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, and Drake May. Now, J.J. McCarthy's climbing his way up there, probably a top five guy at this point. But do you think there's a, good way, there's a chance that a fifth quarterback gets selected in the first round, whether it's the Vikings just deciding to stick and pick or the Raiders or the Broncos? Well, I, I would – offer two lists of teams that need a quarterback badly and need a quarterback sort of badly. Like maybe they could wait one more year on a quarterback and the teams that need quarterbacks badly. You already know it's the top three teams in the draft, Chicago, Washington, New England, Minnesota clearly needs a quarterback badly. Sorry, Sam Darnold. That's just the way things go. And Denver needs a quarterback as well. So those are the five teams that need one badly. And then there's two that need them sort of badly. I think the giants are one of them. And I think the Raiders are the other. But if the Giants or the Raiders don't take a quarterback, and certainly they'd have to move up both, or well, the Giants might not have to, but the Raiders would, um, then that won't put much pressure on, let's say, Denver to take a quarterback in round two. And so I actually think there's a pretty good chance that there's only going to be four quarterbacks taken in the first round of, of the draft. And we've already talked about the four that will be there. Fair enough. The next thing I have for you, Dave, is you can cast the Vikings aside. Um, what is one bold draft prediction that you're sitting on in general that you want to proclaim to the masses? So I, you can tell me if this is a bold prediction, and if it's not, I'll I'll try and give you one that is. Bold predictions aren't my forte because sometimes I feel like people are just making hot takes just for the <laughs> just just for the clout, and I'm I'm not about that. But I don't think Penix will be a first round pick, and okay. I know that he's mocked that way. Um, I was told by multiple people all the way back in late January that he was looked at as a third or a fourth round pick. I don't know if I believe that that's going to happen, but a second round pick. I think that that's going to be where Penix ultimately goes. I think Rattler and Nix could potentially be second round picks as well. I know everybody likes or hears Nick's name more. I like Rattler better, and I know that there's a lot of buzz in the NFL world about Michael Pratt from Tulane. Uh, I don't necessarily join them. So you guys, you can rate that bold prediction. And no, if that's, you bold. Think that that's a bold prediction, I'll try and give you something that's a little more bold. No, I consider that bold, especially after the college football semifinal um, when Penix was all the rage. And then now after his pro day, he kind of got talked back into the first round. So now prognosticating that that won't be that. Uh, I think is bold enough. What about this? So um, let's, let's let's shave it to a big four if we consider those other dudes in round two it's highly unlikely that all four of the guys are studs. Um, so can you identify without seeing their draft team, which one or two won't quite live up to the the billboard? So let's start with McCarthy and let's just say that he, and maybe this will happen if he goes to Minnesota, I think he'll be solid. I think he'll be one of the top 25 guys on the planet. As far as quarterbacking goes, probably for about four years, but I, I don't know if he'll ever reach like the highs that he hit in college, which is Mm -hmm. national champion. (laughs) Is he a Super Bowl winning type quarterback? I find it a little hard to believe. I I kind of find it hard to believe that any of these guys are Super Bowl winning quarterbacks. And so like people rave about Caleb Williams and they call him a generational talent. I I don't think he is. And if he's going to the franchise that has never developed a (laughs) 4,000 yard passer, much less a guy that's, you know, worth remembering for his football play, not for, you know, pestering the commissioner, wearing sunglasses, mooning helicopters, all that stuff. Um, I, I'm a little nervous about Caleb Williams having the opportunity 
to go and be great in Chicago. Uh, and same thing with Washington. It's been a while since the commanders have had a quarterback that have really that's really transcended the franchise and, and made them uh, an outstanding team for more than a year at a time. That being said, I do think Daniels has some significant upside. Mm-hmm. And, and Williams does too. It's just a matter of how they'll ultimately fit, how long the coaching staffs that are in each of those places will be there for them. Mm-hmm. Turnover is always a problem for, for quarterbacks because the new, the new regime will come in, and if they don't like the old quarterback, they'll move on from him, and that sends the quarterback's career tumbling most of the time. So uh, is there a Super Bowl winner in this group? Uh, yeah, it's so hard to say Daniels knowing that he's going to Washington. It's so <laughs> yeah. hard to say Caleb Williams knowing he's going to Chicago. And with May, I think it'll take some time. But why don't I say Drake May? And that okay. in time, he's he's just got that prototypical package as far as passing goes. And he's athletic as a runner. I think in time he could end up – I think his ceiling includes that of – and you've heard this before – Josh Allen, Justin Herbert. I don't know if it's a guarantee he's going to get there. A lot of that's going to depend on his situation. But if things break right for him in New England or Minnesota, then Drake may probably has the most upside. I think that's kind of why I've landed on J.J. McCarthy as my draft prediction for the Vikings, just because I'm I'm just not convinced that Washington or New England is going to pass up on a chance to take Drake May. Agreed instead of throwing J.J. McCarthy into a situation where you're going to have to absolutely do everything for that offense, where at Michigan, it was tailor-made for him to have success in that program. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, So that's kind of why I've landed on McCarthy. Real quick, I got one last question for you. Just off the cuff, who is a day-two guy that if you had to say, this is going to be a successful NFL player, um, just one guy, who do you think it is? Well, I'd, I'd love to talk about Roman Wilson. And, and yeah. what he he did at Michigan, he was effectively their number one wide receiver from J.J. McCarthy. And then what I saw from him at the Senior Bowl in late January, I just think that he's he's more than a slot guy. He's more than just someone who runs terrific routes and, and can get open at will. I think he's got the speed to win downfield. He's a little slight. He's not a big dude, but I think he's someone that can kind of surprise you a little bit. He's been compared to Tyler Lockett. I totally see that. I think he could absolutely be that type of player in the pros. And to me, that gives him an edge over other wide receivers that are great route runners and can be great pros in their own right. And Lad McConkey and Ricky Pearsall. I think those guys are are definitely going to get open all the time. I think Wilson's speed can make him a little bit more of a winner compared to those other two guys as far as downfield routes go. And Obviously, it's going to come down to where they land and where they end up. If Roman Wilson is reunited in L.A. with with Jim Harbaugh, what's what's the likelihood that he's going to get 150 targets in a season? It seems like it'll be pretty low. But if he goes to a team that desperately needs, you know, a number two wide receiver right now, and that he could eventually grow into being a number one guy, it makes all the sense in the world that he could do that. So that's that's the first name that popped into my mind as far as a guy who's a little under the radar. I completely agree with you. Um, I I really think Wilson's going to be fantastic at the <laughs> NFL level just because it, it's not only like his ability to get downfield, but you just get him the ball right away off of like a screen pass or something. He's going to find a way to break tackles. He's going to just his, his acceleration is just incredible and he can just find open space, do all that sort of stuff. And, and honestly, I've kind of compared him to Tank Dell in that manner. Sure. I don't think he's as fast as Tank Dell. Yeah. Obviously, but I was about to bring up and I've just been watching a lot of Xavier Worthy lately and he got a ton of screens at Texas. And I don't I don't know if Worthy can hold up to the wear and tear of the league like Wilson, I think, can. And I think Wilson's got better hands. I think he's a better route runner. He's just he just doesn't have the pure speed. And in the NFL, think of the greatest receivers that have played this game. How many of those guys were four three speed? How many of those guys were four four speed? Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot more to the wide receiver position than just pure speed. I know Tyreek Hill is kind of breaking that mold a little bit, but there there is a lot more nuance that goes into that position. Justin Jefferson is proof of that as well. Mm-hmm. It's really uh, it's just the the Moss and the Tyreek examples are really the 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 only ones in terms of surefire Hall of Famers where you can say see, you know, look at the speed. Oh, one other guy that Josh loves to plug, even a later round sleeper, is Jamari Thrash. Do you share the same sentiment about him even deeper in the draft, or not quite he, as high on him? 
I, I'm not quite as high on him. He was up and down at the senior bowl. That's all the research that I've got on him is, is okay. what I saw there, but there is going to be a place for him in the league. It's just, is he going to be anything more than like a number three receiver for a team? Okay. And he could be a pretty good one, but I don't know if, I don't know if I can say that he's in that same range as the other guys that we just got done talking about. Okay, fair enough. Well, sorry, Josh. We, we tried no, to that's get fair. one more. <laughs> uh, all right, Dave Richards, CBS Sports. Tell me one more time where we can watch those programs on. I think it was YouTube you brought up. Let's hear them. So on YouTube, two places to go and look mm-hmm. for. If you're a fantasy football player, join us on Fantasy Football Today. Just type that into the search bar. We're doing shows every day on YouTube, and we're a podcast, so you can download it if you use any of the podcast apps to listen to stuff if you're driving in the car or stuff like that. You can't you can't watch YouTube while you're driving, or at least you shouldn't, <laughs> but you can listen to us, and we're there. And also, if you're interested in placing some money on some player props during the NFL draft, go to YouTube, search Sportsline. You can add in early edge player props or NFL draft props. You'll find our show there. And the best thing about YouTube is it's free. You can watch these shows and you don't have to pay a dime. You can even subscribe for free. You'll get alerts when they're on. Sometimes there's breaking news and we do live fantasy shows. You'll want to be a part of that. If you play fantasy, if you bet on the NFL, you can do that. Just go to YouTube, search for Fantasy Football Today, search for Sportsline. Josh, do we forget anything on the whole? No, I think this was a fantastic episode. Thanks for joining us, Dave. This is a lot of fun. Oh, Absolutely. My pleasure. You guys are great. You guys know what you're talking about too <laughs> when it comes right. to the bike. <laughs> Greatly hey, appreciate you both. Because uh, if not if only for the Gallahorn, we'll hit you up in about uh, maybe a month and a half or so to go through some of the the post draft stuff and some of the summer Vikings takes if that's all right. Count on it. All right, you uh, awesome. gentlemen have a wonderful day. We'll talk to you next time. See you fellas. Later. Later guys.